Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be discussing Midnight Stranger by Bora Naono. Now, before we get started, there will be spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled in this manga, go ahead and click off now. No worries, I'll catch you next time. Now, for those of you left behind, let's go over some content warnings. There may be references to religion, prejudice, self-deprecation, power imbalance, suicidal ideation, violence, stalking, death and or dying, sexual assault, orphans, age gap, manipulation, kidnapping, incest, child abandonment, statutory rape and or pedophilia, and eating disorders as these things do appear in the manga. Now, if that's okay with you, let's go and get started. As always, let's start with the synopsis. And just to let you guys know, there are some really interesting names in this, so if I mispronounce things, I apologize. Anyway, let's get started. Roy is a goat spirit born from the wants and desires of humans. While the purpose of his existence is to protect and heal humanity, his looks scare all of the people around him. Unwilling to trust in this being, the humans end up sacrificing Roy in a fire to the gods, hoping they'll gain favor for their offering. Instead, they end up calling upon the god of fire, Ziyu. Ziyu is far from impressed by the humans' offering, scaring them off with his power. Now that Roy has been sacrificed to Ziyu, Ziyu has no intentions of letting the goat spirit go. Instead, re building his form into something cute for Ziyu to enjoy. Centuries pass and the importance of gods in the modern world has faded. Ziyu and Roy are still hanging out in the human realm with Ziyu becoming an idol to pay for their lifestyle among the humans. On the other hand, Roy continues to work for his master, Ziyu, whom he cares for much more than a servant should. But as much as he loves Ziyu and follows his every command, Roy can't help but still be drawn to the humans who betrayed him so long ago against Ziyu's advice. So during the night, in the cute goat form Zio made for him, Roy goes out to rid humans of illness and spirits. While this is Roy's purpose for living, would he be able to live if Zio found out he was still protecting humanity? First off, the art style isn't my favorite. The eyes look far too large for the faces, and their faces can just look very disproportionate. It gives me classic yaoi vibes, which isn't necessarily bad, it's just not my preference. The sex scenes have some of the best art though. You can really tell they took their time in those panels, and for that, I am thankful. <laughs> Of our two main characters, Roy is pretty good looking most of the time, which I think is partly due to his smaller and narrower eyes, which just give him a more proportionate look as opposed to Ziyu, who has the more oversized eye style and can appear much more inconsistent throughout the series. Before we get into the story and what I think about that, I do want to talk about the content warnings. There are a lot of really questionable ones this time around, specifically the incest warning. The main story does not contain incest, however, within each of the two volumes of this series, a separate separate unrelated story is included. The story in the first one is fine, it does have a questionable age gap and a power imbalance, but it thankfully does not have incest. However, the second extra story in the second volume is a true blue incest story between an underage nephew and his adult uncle. As if that isn't bad enough, the uncle also essentially raised the nephew, so it might as well be a parent-child relationship. Ick. 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 I get that this is fiction and I am admittedly a fan of some pseudo incest work my housemate comes to mind as well as work with other questionable warnings such as dubcon and noncon but incest is just one of those that truly grosses me out again incest is not in the main story but if you're reading the second volume of this series be warned that the extra does have it with that out of the way, let's talk about the main story. Specifically, I want to talk about Roy's character. Roy is a sad boy, one of my favorite character types. He's very self-deprecating and has a low sense of self, which isn't helped by how domineering and self-righteous Zooey is. This leads to some funny moments with Zooey being a bit of a tsundere, while Roy is much more clueless. Roy doesn't believe he's worthy to be Zeus' lover, while Zeu doesn't believe anyone is worthy to be by his side except Roy. I love relationships like this. However, it is unfortunate how overpowered Roy can be emotionally due to Ziyu being his master. Having Roy crying and apologizing while having sex with Zui for the first time because he feels like he isn't worthy does hurt me deeply. It's adorable, but very sad. The overall story isn't bad. It's more of a collection of one shots with the same characters, though it does have the underlying romance between Zui and Roy connecting them. Minus the one with the side couple, that is. It feels a bit superficial because it doesn't have an overarching storyline. Still, one thing I really enjoyed about it is the inclusion of multiple gods, deities, and creatures from different cultures. I love the idea that all of these beings interact regardless of cultural or religious ties. And here I will attempt to name the ones we get to see. Roy is a Shagata, <laughs> which is Swiss. Zui is Zuitekutl. 
Kutkatuli, the Aztec god of fire, and there is even a parry from Persian folklore. Goodness gracious, y'all have no idea how difficult that was. <laughs> it's so interesting to see all of these entities interact and how they function together to keep balance in the human world. I hate that we only really scratched the surface of these deities and I wish we could have learned more, but I was happy to hear about them all the same. With all that being said, this is very okay. I don't know that I would recommend it because of how superficial it is. It feels like some smut tethered loosely together with a few snippets of random storylines. I would have preferred an overarching storyline as I think it would have helped build out the world more more and allowed for deeper moments. It does introduce us to some interesting folklore, but that for me was the most notable thing. The romance was fine, the story was meh, and the art just wasn't for me. So, have you read Midnight Stranger? If so, what do you think? Do you agree with my assessment? Do you not? Let me know and comment below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Bye!